Does man have a free will? Every commandment of God and every offer of blessing, favor, or salvation in the Bible. Okay, God, through the, throughout the Bible, He's telling people, do this, don't do that. Do this, don't do that. If you do this, I will do this for you. If you do that, I will do this for you. Okay, He's, he's offering blessings and He's commanding obedience. Every single one of those implies, I think it more than implies, but let's say implies, that man has a real choice. And if you don't have a real choice, God is mocking us. Okay, one of these days I'm gonna, gonna do something. I keep meaning to do it and I keep forgetting it. Um, let's say uh, those little, little girls that were out there in the, what are their names? Okay, the older one is Isabel. Let's say I had Isabel standing right here. And I took a piece of candy. And I said, is Isabel, this is yours if you can reach it. She can't reach it, can she? She doesn't have a chance of reaching it. Okay? Is that what God does to us? Huh? Does He make offers that there's no way we can do it? We can't even choose it, according to the Calvinist. God had to choose it for us in eternity past. You see? And if I did that to Isabel, what would you think of me? Mean, nasty, cruel, wouldn't you? But the Calvinist says God does that, and we're supposed to bow down and say He's holy and He's wonderful. And Well, guess what? God is holy. God is wonderful because the Calvinist is wrong. Okay? All right. Um, ah, does man have a free will? Uh, God's chastening and His judgment of sin demands that man has real choices to make or God is not just. If you're not really responsible for your sin because God made you do it. And remember Flip Wilson? Ernestine? The church of what's happening now? The devil made me do it. That was ludicrous. That was silly. That was stupid. But for men who go to seminary and spend their life in the ministry to say, God made you do it, that's horrible. And then he's going to send people to hell because of something he made them do? Is that justice? I don't think so. Okay. Um, Acts chapter 5, verse 4. Okay, this is the story of Peter and Ananias and Sapphira, remember? They had a piece of property, they sold it, they brought the money to the apostles, they lied, saying this is the entire proceeds of the sale, and it wasn't really. They kept back some of it. Well, here's what Peter said. While it remained, this property, was it not thine own? I mean, wasn't it yours to do with however you wanted? It was yours, right? After it was sold, was it not in thine own power? You had this piece of land. It was your decision as to whether you kept it or sold it. You decided to sell it, and now you've got money in your hand. And he says, isn't it in your own power? I mean, don't you have the right to decide? That's my money. I can do with it what I want. If I want to go out and buy me a new Porsche, they didn't have Porsches in the first century, but, you know, a brand new chariot <laughs> with a white horse. Okay? He could have done it. He didn't have to give that money. He had a free will. Okay? He had a free will. And he says, you know, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You haven't lied to men, but to God. Okay? That was, was the sin. It wasn't what he did with the money. The money was his. He could do whatever he wanted to with it. Okay? But he lied about it, and he died. God punished him for his sin, not because of what he did with the money. 
All right? Here's another verse, and this is, I think this is fantastic. Okay? How does a sovereign God, how can He be absolutely sovereign and yet allow us to make decisions that are contrary to His will? John chapter 19, verse 10 and 11. Jesus is before Pilate. Pilate is accusing him, and Jesus isn't answering his questions. Okay, you remember that. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? You're not going to answer me? You're not going to talk to me? I'm the judge, don't you know that? you got to talk to the judge. Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee, and have power to release thee? Jesus answered, Thou couldest have no power at all against me, I get this, except it were given thee from above. Pilate had power to crucify Christ because God gave him the power. God didn't make the decision for Pilate, but he gave Pilate the authority to do what he wanted to do. Okay? And he does the same thing for other people here on the earth in varying degrees. He's given President Trump a whole lot more power than I've got. God gives power. See, all power comes from Him. But He has the right. Anybody here a boss? You got people working under you? Huh? Some of you? Okay. Do you delegate power or do you do everything yourself? I hope you delegate a few things, right? I hope you tell some other people, you do this and I'll do that, and you know, I mean, you drive yourself crazy if you try to do it all yourself. Well, of course, God's not gonna drive himself crazy, but he, he distributes his power to other people, and he gives them the right to make decisions. And he has done that for every single person on the face of the earth. We all have the right to make up our own mind. Now, Pilate is sitting there on the judgment seat, and Jesus is in front of him. But what about the next time they meet? Who's going to be on the judgment seat then? It'll be Jesus. And who's going to be in front of him being judged? It will be Pilate. Okay? Man makes decisions, some good and some bad, but those bad decisions, you don't get away with a one of them. Okay? Because God is the judge. And in the end, whatever God wants is going to happen. Okay? Um, all right. The one who's, who sat there meek and lowly, taking it, from Pilate and the high priest and all those guys, he's the king of kings and lord of lords. Okay? And someday they're going to realize that. They'll realize it. All right. So that is sovereignty and free will. Does, is God sovereign? Absolutely. Does man have a free will? Yes, he does. Because the sovereign of the universe decided to let us have a free will. That's one thing the Calvinists say God can't do. It isn't amazing. He can do anything but give us a free will. He can even make a sin, which is totally against his nature, according to the Calvinist. Oh my goodness, that's, that's gross. I shouldn't say that. My mother's maiden name was gross. She'd get on us all the time. Don't say that. <laughs> oh, gross. Don't say that. Anyway. It's gross to accuse God the way the Calvinists do. Now they think that they are bringing honor and glory to God with their position on sovereignty, but they're not.